Well, folks, it is time. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, for the top 16 of the May 2021 Chala Slime Monthly. And folks, we have got a very, very interesting series of decks for you today. You may have seen already on the slide that is uh, going in between rounds that we have our top 16. Uh, but if you haven't seen it already, I will port you over there for just a second so you can take a look. We are, in fact... About to watch a top cut with four Eldritch decks, and if you're concerned about these being boring Eldritch decks, uh, one of them's Prankid, one of them is Orcist, and one of them is Zombie World. So, uh, <laughs> keep on the edge of your seat for those. Three Zodiac decks, two of these are Tri-Brigade, one is Pure. Two Fluffle decks, that's right, Giant Skyhawk and one of the other three Fluffle pilots made it into top cut. Two Dragon Link decks, unsurprising, then one apiece of Drytron, including two card extra deck special piloted by Malleus, Dinosaur, that is Cyber VX, aka Jason Leonard on that bad boy, Virtual World, I don't know how they're doing it, I don't know how they're still doing it, Phantom Knight, and Paleozoic, and this is Paleo Frog, but I thought it would be funnier to call it Paleo. I am joined for this commentary by a wonderful individual who needs no introduction, who I will now introduce. Uh, this is Sir Eminon. Uh, Sir Eminon, are, are you with us? Howdy. Doing pretty well. Uh, I thought it would be four boring Eldritch decks, but we are pleasantly surprised here. Hopefully we'll be in for some good games. Uh, I hope so too. And if you would like to follow along with those games, you can do so at challenge.com slash CSM May 2021 top cut we're going to be playing four rounds here cutting down from 16 to the finals graciously organized by our own rebecca and folks it has been it's been a long day uh today has been a a test both on our ability to understand what was going on in the individual games we watched a lot of mystic mind we had to sit through round one uh to a test of patience working with challenge a program Invented by the Rat King. And uh, I am happy to report that we're, we're almost done. We're almost through, baby. Uh, what do you know, Eminon, about any of these decks? Any of them catching your eye? Uh, the two-card extra deck Drytron deck is one that is going to particularly pique my interest here. Uh, I am aware that it apparently topped last month's quarantine... Or, sorry, Chalice Line Monthly... But I haven't seen it in action yet, so I would like to definitely check that one out if we get the chance to. Uh, that is, in other fact, that, the match I would like to be going for. Yeah, for sure. But other than that, I think everything looks fairly standard. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the format has been going on for quite some time now. Uh, I've been a little bit away from the game myself, uh, just because things have gotten uh, relatively stale. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, it's good to see the players still being able to be consistent on the decks that they've been practiced on for quite a while now. Listen, buddy, you're preaching to the choir here. You don't have to tell me relatively stale. We can both be honest about it. The format <laughs> is diverse, it is wide open, and it is fucking boring. I'm sick of these decks! <laughs> it's the same shit from four years ago for 15 formats. It's nice to see people innovating on Drytron, it's nice to see people innovating on VW, but... Leov cannot come soon enough. <laughs> Please, deliver me from the hell that is uh, Dinosaur in the Year of Our Lord 2021, Shadow in the Year of Our Lord 2021, <sighs> Zodiac in the Year of Our Lord 2021. Hey, at least there is a distinct lack of a normal summon Alistair, it seems. I'm shocked. What the hell? Where'd the Invoked pilots go? We had them. They were here. We had a lot of Dogmatica, a lot of Invoked. We had some Mech Knight, all of them, just bottomed out. Yeah, the only real answer is uh, the Edda Pro Shuffler did not will the at or the um, the hard drawn invocations in response to the Ash Blossoms on Alistair. So, and to uh, that, that, I would say, the, Sir Eminon, the only way. <laughs> thank you so much for mailing a check to Alpha Cretin. I uh, really appreciate that, uh, and ensuring that the Edda Pro Shuffler worked the way that we wanted. Yeah, be sure to check your PayPal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oy, oy, oy. All right, well, uh, we are going to uh, port it over to Giant Skyhawk and Malleus. We've had both of these people on. Uh, both camera 
uh, today and camera in general. I mean, uh, both of these individuals are, of course, very good at Yu-Gi-Oh! And they're responsible for some really silly decks. Giant Skyhawk, of course, has been all over my individual channel, and Malleus was the talk of the town last Chalice Line Monthly, in which they brought their patented two-card extra deck, Drytron, which is going to be relevant for exactly this tournament before we're allowed to play Moo Beta Fafnir. But uh, let's go into that now. Okay, so... Eminon, I, I don't know if you're familiar with it. Do you know what the two cards in the extra deck are? I believe they are number monsters, uh, if I looked at the list correctly uh, from last time. Damn it. All but... right, yes. They are number, I think, 99, number archive, which on activation allows you to reveal a random monster from your extra deck, and if it's a number, you get to special it. And Chaos Gate Sunya. It's like the worst build-your-own Zeus, but it doesn't need the battle phase, and it banishes the cards. And we're seeing it right now. Number 78, I was close. Yeah, uh, 78, 99, same thing. <laughs> All right, so here we go. And, you know, this is the motivation behind playing two cards in the extra deck. You know, random, by the way. <laughs> I, I don't know how you would resolve this in paper, but uh, I love this. Giant Skyhawk says, no, 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 we're not doing this. Has drawn his Fiend's copy of Edge Imp Scythe. Uh, this card is just so absolutely bonkers. And a lot of the reason why you are seeing Fluffle represented at any level of play, uh, usually pretty terrible. This is a Hand Trap Fusion spell. It allows you to perform a fusion using it and uh, other cards in your hand during your opponent's main phase. So you can use those two to go into Fright for Whale. Fright for Whale to destroy a monster your opponent controls. And then when your opponent goes to remove your Fright for Whale, you can chain Fright for Whale to send a Fluffle Repair to the graveyard. A great way to get this Sunya out before it can actually accomplish anything. Oh, we got a big chain link here. So the number archive is in fact a quick effect. But we did, in fact, see the Ash Blossom as well in response to the Whale's other effect. Um, so it looks like we are going to be resolving into the Chaos Gate Sunya, but uh, the Fight for Whale, of course, does not uh, target, so it will be leaving the field regardless. Yeah, that looks like the end of the game to me. Uh, so this is just something that happens. Uh, it's a little crusty, and uh, some people just don't know it until it happens to them once. But if a monster meets its activation condition in the middle of a chain and then leaves the field, sorry, <laughs> you missed your opportunity. Uh, and uh, as a result, that Fright for Whale sticking around. Um, no big deal. The Fright for Whale being on board or off board matters very little. With five cards in hand, I struggle to think of five that wouldn't put up lethal for Fluffle. Yeah, absolutely. And here we go, sending the repair to the graveyard. Uh, this card we saw put in work uh, in one of the previous future matches, where it was able to actually just get lethal on board in a very simplified game state. Uh, so here we'll be able to see Bear come down as well. And Yikes. yeah, pretty much just got about everything we could ever ask for here. All right, so I'll reveal a little bit about Skyhawk's deck. If uh, individuals have watched Skyhawk's profile, uh, on my channel, then they know what Skyhawk's up to. Wow, discarding Toy Vendor off of Toy Vendor. Hilarious. Uh, but if they haven't, Skyhawk has changed his deck profile pretty considerably since that video. Uh, while he maintains that it is probably correct to blind first into a... I don't want to say this... more competitive tournament like an extravaganza... He said, I think I can get away with blinding second at this event, and has been doing so pretty well uh, over the course of the tournament, and then has the ability to board into the blind first version with Necrofusions, provided his opponent makes him take the play. Uh, just blatant disrespect to the Chalice <laughs> Line Monthly. I mean, I, bad. do you think anyone was on two-card extra deck Drytron at the Extravaganza Invitational? <laughs> You know what? I will I will yield any judgment. That is a fair point. <laughs> oh, wow. This was a miserable open for uh, Malleus as well. Was that double Ash Blossom, zero rituals, gamma pass? I'm so I sorry. Blue eyes, white dragon. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, speaking of disrespect. Now I take all your life points. Oh, uh, Light right. Dragon 42. We could that's just question. double the whale, and that's game right there. Yep. Double Ash, double gamma, delta. Okay, well, that's Drytron, and it will be Drytron until we get Moo Beta Fafnir. <laughs> yep. Malleus uh, says, anyway. on to game two, and I guess. 
Yeah, that was uh, that was quite the opening hand for yeah. sure. That was close. That was close. So uh, Skyhawk played exactly one copy of Scythe in the go first build uh, because it was part of the combo. You'd send it to the graveyard and it protects your monsters from being destroyed while it's in the grave. But it really shines as a blind second hand trap, just a way to disrupt your opponent, uh, prevent them from popping off as far as they can, and set up your own graveyard with stuff like repair for the crackback. It's just really such an amazing card. Yeah, it's crazy how unbelievable the card is in terms of like giving more options to what the deck was already capable of doing, but also just you know turning the corner on one of the deck's you know, very traditional weaknesses in terms of you know the lack of a go first game plan. But here we are. Uh, just doing some really crazy stuff turn one. And, you know, I, the, the reason that Skyhawk plays this version of Fluffle is because he was, a uh, Fluffle player reached out to him and was like, you should read the Fluffle cards. And he's like, I'm not going to read the Fluffle cards. He read them and he went, oh, I have to play it. And for what it's worth, when you read the cards that Fluffle has, you do have that reaction. It's like Toy Vendor does what? Dog does what? The Pendulum Monster does what? It's just an <laughs> unreal amount of stuff that they have that functionally wins or reads win the game uh, on the first on the first turn. All right, down comes Fafnir. So opening better already. Uh, here we go for Nova, and we'll. Presumably grab Alpha or Zeta here, depending on the hand, of course. Uh, I, come on, prediction. <laughs> I, I'm seeing the chat has a clear favorite in this game. Uh, we've currently got a 96% that Skyhawk's going to win. Come on. And no love for the two-card extra deck. Well, this is at least right. better. Uh, we get the Alpha into rotation, which is, of course, extremely important. Yeah, Alpha Nova is pretty much right where you want to be, uh, grabbing the Lonely Benton here. If Skyhawk wins this, he has to face Dino. That's so funny. Oh, the irony. <laughs> <laughs> and Malia says, if I weren't busy dueling, I'd put my points on Skyhawk also. <laughs> it is always shocking to me, this two-card extra deck, uh, Drytron, every time we have it on camera, it looks like hot garbage, but it always makes it into top cut at X1. I don't understand. Yeah, I would really love to see this uh, combo fully resolve. Here comes I Benton. And I think we are going to get to see something here, right? Like, uh, Manju, go grab the other half of the ritual. We can end on Herald with, like, four or five negates. That might be enough to win the game. You know, important to note that the Sunya thing is mostly a meme. It's still just Drytron. All right, speaking of which, we're going to be going for it right now. And there we're being no informed Herald. that there is no Herald. Okay, so. well, never mind. <laughs> that is not part of the game plan here. Tell me they pass turn here. Tell me that's the play. Okay, we do at least go for oh. the uh, the boy. Yep, and with Medionis already in hand, we can go for any ritual monster of choice. Uh, I believe that they're on the Drytron rituals, yeah. They uh, are. Draconids and Quadrantids. Uh, so, Draconids is a cool choice for sure. Yeah, these, uh, these rituals are really strong, right? They're very, very good, yeah. And OCG actually, they tend to play the Draconids um, in their current lists with Mubeta Fafnir. Uh, because it's a way to help play around Joel, um, since, of course, you can just Foolish Burial any Drytron card to the grave. Um, so it allows you to get whatever you're missing into rotation, and you can still have an interruption. And Ruby to Fafting also has other effects besides just Foolish Burialing and, um, you know, replacing the costs for rituals. It also allows you to negate spell and trap effects if you have a machine ritual, which is what the Drytron rituals happen to be. That's pretty good. It is so frustrating that, like, there's this entire archetype of, like, capable ritual bosses for Drytron that have just been completely passed over for, like, the 18 negate boards that you can put up with, uh, with Herald. Yeah, um, it really do be like that sometimes. All right, passing on this, and immediately we got Patchwork, so off to the races. Okay, well, this is the card that Reddit was sure was gonna break, uh... Fluffle in 2016. If only we had Patchwork, they said, we would be just as competitive as, I don't know, Monarch Burning Abyss. And uh, I guess maybe it's finally come home to roost. Yeah, I mean, we got a extremely 
great quality of cards to search now. Um, and Dog is a great supplement to that. So we'll be able to just go for whatever fusion we please here. This is always the most frustrating part of playing against Fluffle. Just watching them poly and think, okay, what flavor of dead am I? I am the whale flavor of dead. Okay. Yeah, it's cool how generic the whale is in comparison to a lot of the other fusions that require either specifically saviors or chain. This one can, of course, use any Egypt monster. And that's really important for, uh, for Scythe specifically, which you can see coming out of the Fright for Whale in the artwork. <laughs> All right, and we got penguin triggering, we got whale triggering, we have chain as well. And, and this sucks. Other... You, you got a Sunya here. You just don't have another option. Uh, you're not going to get another opportunity to Sunya. But hey, big yeah. shock. As soon as Sunya hits the field, you're going to be able to it's use whale to send popped. it. You know? Yeah, it's the same song and dance as game one. Uh, I mean, Sonya yeah. is theoretically pretty cool, but boy, does it suck exactly in scenarios like this. Yeah, and it's like they go, they can go for Whale so early into their combo before yeah. actually committing to anything like relevant that, I mean, you're caught between a rock and a hard place. You can't really get value off the Sonya, but, I mean, if you do it now, you're just going to get popped, and that's kind of the end of the game. <laughs> yeah, and what you saw there was a uh, Fright for Whale... Uh, targeting itself and then banishing the edge imp scythe which protects your fluffle monsters that was pitched off of the penguin that was used as the material for whale all these cards combo with themselves it's absurd penguin is too good this is is this in your opinion as the penguin master the greatest penguin or would you reserve that spot for bolt Ooh, Bolt is Bolt's pretty good. It's uh, it's a thunder monster, but it's it, it, so it wasn't an effect monster, so you couldn't tribute it for Colossus, which was sad. But um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, Buffalo Penguin is by far and away the most playable Penguin monster ever printed. For now, um, besides, get on it, Konami. Besides Penguin Soldier in two thousand and two. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we got uh, six cards in hand still, by the way. So in attack mode. I would say now that's I take fairly your life point. average for this deck. So this is a rough turn for Skyhawk. Uh, this is one of those decks that you can't play if you're someone like me who gets choice paralysis. Uh, <laughs> the world is kind of your oyster here. Uh, looks like we're going for the path of least resistance. We're just going to fire off this Fright for Fusion. Don't want to run into maybe a Nibiru and... Ah, this is just so strong. We can go for Kraken. We can go from Kraken into a uh, copy of the Sabertooth, depending on what's in the hand, like a polymerization. We can Forbidden Droplet, sending a Scythe to the graveyard to assemble lethal. Wow, uh, that's a cute way to make it into the battle phase without having to deal with a big rocky boy and... Uh, Sans anything else, I believe this might be just about the end of the game. Yeah, this is going to be 15, 22, 39, 17. And that should be way more than enough. Because that would be, what, 54 plus 39? Mm -hmm. So that should be game. Ugh, a lot of people 93. don't know this. Kraken gets two attacks. Why? I could not tell you. I do not know. This card would be just as playable if it didn't get two attacks. Yeah, and here we are. Long gone are the days of relying on the Sabretooth into Kraken OTK, because we can we can just do this instead. Yeah, wow. That was, what, three summons? Yeah, literally three summons. Uh, Crazy. Malleus says, feature match curse. I don't know what it is. Every time we feature Malleus, they get blown out. But honestly, this one, it didn't feel like they misplayed. It didn't feel like they were kind of flubbing their lines. It honestly felt like just an unwinnable matchup, you know? Uh, whale being able to destroy stuff mid-chain is just something that Sunya isn't equipped to deal with. And it looks like all of you individuals that voted for uh, for Fluffle will be getting your sick one-to-one -one <laughs> odds on the prediction. Yeah, imagine betting 3k points to, to get 3,050 back. <laughs> Couldn't be me, folks. It's a nice one, right? Such a beautiful song. A wonderful melody. And we are back. Uh, really, a two-minute break. <laughs> what about that? Uh, you, we have your top eight for the May 2021 
Chalice Slime Monthly, and uh, depending on your definition of different deck, it's eight different decks in Top Cut. That's right, of the four Eldritch decks that made it into Top 16, one of them made it out of the Top 16 round. Of the two Di Dragon Link duelists that made it into Top 16, uh, they, both, they both fell. They both got completely owned. But uh, we do have some really cool games to show you. Orcist Lich is going to be playing Virtual World. Dinosaur is going to be playing Fluffle. That's Jason Leonard versus Giant Skyhawk. Two titans of the Chalice Line Monthly. Zodiac is going to be playing Zodiac Tri Brigade. It's kind of a different deck. And the duel we will be playing is Paleozoic versus Phantom Knight Burning Abyss. I am joined for the second round in a row by my co-commentator, Sir Eminon. How are you doing, buddy? Doing fantastically. And you know what? For as much as we complain about decks that have persisted over the past, you know, four or so years, I think these are two decks that we can make a bit of an exception for because uh, these are decks that we don't get to see very often and really cool ones to see in top eight. Uh, so I agree. Um, however, I think the, uh, the problem with that sentence is persisted uh paleozoic has not persisted <laughs> this deck is not good that is true <laughs> and yet it here true. it is in top eight someone is doing very well with it uh burning abyss phantom knight is just a completely different deck than the burning abyss that you're familiar with from uh duelist alliance it's this long combo deck that is extremely resilient to most hand traps ends on extremely powerful boards and has a high degree of repeatability you know the burning abyss monsters are really good at putting themselves back into your hand cherubini is fantastic at getting the resource loop going uh and we watched uh, Nathan or not really deploy it to an unbelievable finish uh, in the actual game that we spectated them in Swiss. But I'm rooting for Paleo. I want to see Paleo win. Yeah, me too. You know, for how much flack uh, backer decks get, they have a lot to deal with like nowadays. Because especially post side, things are not easy for back any backer deck really. And here we go. All let's right. Let's see who won the Paleo die roll. won the die roll. Let's, let's go. go. <laughs> All right. L let's see what the combo is. So Swap Frog, Normal Summon. We're going to activate the effect of Swap Frog. We're going to send from deck to graveyard. Whoa, a copy sending Ronin, Ronin Toten. Toten. Oh, my God. And then we'll put it back Putting in the Putting Swap hand. Frog back in hand. Ooh. Hmm. What's the next step? Do you think we, do you think we set some cards? Okay. That's a good one. Pot of <gasps> Desires. Desires. All right. Ah. And get hit by an ash blossom. Ash. This is this is my paleo experience. I remember this. It's okay. Were we good enough to draw the other water to pitch for swap frog? Does not look oh, like not it. Not this time. Not this time, Sag. All right, set to pass. Let's go. What the hell? How did that happen? Uh, Ash Blossom. <laughs> so, All unfortunately right. for the Paleozoic player, uh, while a couple of well-timed traps probably would have, like, ended the turn of 80% of the decks in Top Cut, uh, this is the deck that can play through everything. And Nathan or not has played through... I think three or four hand traps uh, while uh, playing against other opponents. I This deck just does absolutely everything under the sun. Yeah, chock full of extenders. We also see one being pitched in the wing. So that's just more insurance. Uh, the cool thing about uh, the wing in particular is that it's great against trap decks because you can dodge stuff like Ice Dragon's Prison by just, you know, chaining the wing. And that is a very great interaction to have. All right, Cherub's out. This is a weird point to go for Cherubini. Uh, we watched Nathan do a lot of uh, playing around stuff like this. Obviously, Solemn Strike on the summon is always going to be extremely good. Uh, but most of the individual removal spells get blanked if you summon something like a Kagamucha Knight beforehand or put additional bodies on the board. Yeah, so we might not have access to as many of those as we normally would like. Here comes the wing right away. So we're going to try again. Because this does trigger Torn Scale as well. We and could go for a rank 3 play. We could go for a second Cherubini if we have one. Ooh, two Cherubini. That would be that would be pretty interesting deck building. <laughs> it would be a uh, greedy deck building. Yep, looks like Breaksword is the play here. 
Uh, we can break that trap and then combo off from this position. Seems pretty good, and Paleo is not known to play very many hand traps. Yeah, uh, you just don't have too much room for him. Oh, Trap Trick is the massive punish, though. Wow, a way to stop that breaksword and get exactly what you want. Canadia, so good here. As long as you can prevent your opponent from getting to Rusty, you could take this one super easy. Yeah, because we have inevitability with a Toad coming next turn for sure. Ooh, and we uh, know fighted. that our opponent doesn't have a better uh, summon. This prevents them from getting a Silent Boots out of the hand and... Wow, a pass back. I mean, we might be able to do this. It's got to be Fogblade on the Swap Frog here. Or Even else, Fogblade on the Swap isn't fantastic. It's not good, yeah. I mean, Swap Frog is just such an amazing card. Uh, and a lot of why it's so good is it dodges just so much. Uh, does not oh. dodge that. Holy guacker bully, that's painful. Oh, that is real real evil right there that's even worse because that sets you back two frogs now yikes and it'll be a while before toad hits the board now just no traps here. either and i mean Holy. we specifically activated the desires after sending the ronin to avoid a possibility of banishing every ronin toten but that's right, uh yeah it's possible that there's one in that 10 card banish pile and we just don't have a way to get to frog after this tour guide off the top pretty good as well Yep, and we can just go for any manner of plays. We could flip up this uh, Drake Sword and just hard make Rusty if we wanted to. I wonder if uh, if X69420 is like thinking here. If they if they have like a Lancia or something. And it says, yeah, I think I'm losing either way. Gamma is a decent one. If you can keep monsters oh. off the field, maybe you can get... But uh, this puts bodies on the board for the break sword. Yeah. That's... You can break sword pop gamma and you can bring back your PKs. And torn scales can use its effect because it's a new uh, turn. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> that's rough. This is definitely a rough one. Uh, if gamma didn't summon, we'd be in a great position, yeah. Yep. But as is, back comes the boots, back comes the torn scale. Those are fours now. We can trigger the torn scale in order to send another card to the graveyard. Dark Ruler no more doing just about nothing here. <laughs> Shout out to the driver on board. That's really the psychic sad. Psychic soldier. They, they were able to uh, banish 10 cards from their deck, but they missed the driver. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go. Another copy of Boots. And that gives us the requisite material for Rusty if we want. We could also go for any of the rank 4 plays, like Raider's Knight, for example. Yep. Going for Rusty seems reasonable. And Notably, we also did not... We also didn't Torn Scale effect in Grave yet, so we have another extender there. And another in Ragged Gloves. We've got Silent Boots, we've got Ragged Gloves. We're going for that first. Uh, it would be hard for me to imagine a scenario where this isn't lethal. Maybe like a long convoluted combo that fails to get a negate on board and dies to Nibiru is the only scenario in which I see X69420 even in the game. But I think you can threaten uh, a meaningful piece of interaction way before you're out of gas, especially with this much stuff in the graveyard. Like uh, Verte here is crazy. Uh, you have to shotgun Nibiru not in response to the Verte effect, so they can just keep going. They aren't locked afterwards. It's rough. Yeah, and we can also go for another Breaksword if we really wanted to, because, fun fact, Breaksword is not once per turn on uh, any of its effects. But, yeah, just make Verte smile. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's all she wrote. Uh, leaving the driver on field represents an extra 2,500 points of damage. With that bad boy, and then we can just go directly to the battle phase. Do not pass go. Do not make it out of top eight. And, man, this is the mark of a truly talented duelist not drawing any of the red ice pieces. Gotta love to see it. Of course. All right, so Dragoon, very, very powerful card, takes game one. And this is rough with Paleo losing the first game because that's where you don't have to deal with like the targeted side deck hate of like Lightning Storms and Harpy's Feather Duster evenly matched. Uh, yeah, a like, lot of these cosmic. A lot of these kind of rogue control decks get a lot of mileage out of going under the meta, you know. 
uh, you're playing cards that other people aren't prepared for. If we were watching a whole bunch of individuals trying to jam a combo that specifically made Scythe, and that's something that you're generally just okay with. Uh, games two and three, your opponent knows what you're up to. They're able to more specifically target their end boards. They're able to board more effectively, go into stuff like you said, Lightning Storm, Harpy's Feather Duster. And uh, they are able to give you fewer opportunities to get to your linear play, which their linear play outclasses anyway. So uh, Rough Life losing game one as a Rogue Duelist. Yeah, Rogue Duelist uh, and being a trap deck on top of it, and it's never easy. All right, we're going to try again and hope that things go a bit better this time around. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, I was hoping to see this stuff. So this what? is just more ways to get to Toad Turn 1. Uh, I, I love this engine, actually. Um, <laughs> so what this does is it gets you to Bahamut and Toad, but also you can uh, Toad add back the double fin shark, which lets you normal summon it next turn and then bring back the, uh, the buzzsaw shark and go for another Bahamut. So it just gets you towed every turn. Yo! So you don't have to rely on Swap Frog uh, just by itself anymore. So <laughs> it was sharks the, the whole time? Yeah, so we got more starters, which is really, really cool. I really like this engine. Um, oh, and I saw it's water it a bit guys in... you can discard for Swap, yeah. too. This is, this is yeah, pretty, exactly. Yeah. This is pretty cool. All right, set, set for Frog. That's the name of the game, buddy. Here we go. This is uh, Paleo as we know it. Exactly four summons as well. That's hilarious. Not that your opponent would keep it in a Biru versus Paleo Frog games <laughs> the two trap and three. Deck, yeah. <laughs> All right, battle phase. All right, Torn Scale is on the low end of normal summons. Canadia is really good here, and what do you know? They have it. Yeah. Um then that that's pretty good that turns off like the the psychic wielder and tracker if they play it um all right oh, turns off everything I okay mean, perfect you're not on leoncolia <laughs> shut up you're not oh, playing leoncolia let's go leoncolia of course really good after you pot of desires and not fantastic yes. otherwise i imagine it'll be putting back exactly ronin toten i can't think of a more effective card to put there lean is broken young lean doer let's see it swap frog into the graveyard yeah, I remember like back in the day, um, I think it was Joshua Schmidt who said, um, you know, ev like after turn one, Lee and Colia is always better than like Varela, which is what people normally play. Mm -hmm. And especially with like Desires as well. So yeah, Lee and Colia definitely putting in work here, just getting an additional body to help hopefully push for lethal. All right. Well, I mean, we can start it with uh, the Bahamut Shark, right? Does it lock you in any meaningful way? I don't think so. Uh, just prevents itself from attacking, but you can just link it away. Okay. I also we... would like to see if they're on, like, the Coral Anemone stuff. Um, because that has cool interactions with Swap Frog as well. They are. Which, oh, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So, uh, we'll be able to trigger the Toad here and get the Swap Frog back if we want. We can get the Buzzsaw Shark as well. Whoa. Yeah. There's a lot of cool shit we can do from this position. All right. I'm, I'm back in on this deck. I had my doubts. Uh, turn one toad is unfortunately not triggering the serotonin sensors in my brain. This stuff is. This is what I like to see. More of this, please. Yep. And then here we go. Here we go for another um, another potential rank four being Bahamut. Or we can go for Dweller. That's Dweller's... great against PK. So uh, PK ha does dodge a lot of specific targeted hate. Uh, Dweller is an FTK versus it. It literally can't Absolutely. do anything. And Dweller boosting the entire board. Sands the unaffected Canadian, of course. Ooh, we haven't used our normal. Can we use swap to put itself back in the hand and then normal the swap? Uh, we did normal the double fin shark, which ah, is how we got boo. this dweller online. Yeah. Never mind. But, but this is still very, very solid because we can make another toad if we wanted to. Uh, I think this might be lethal. What's the defense on this card? 16? It is Ooh, 16. No, it's slightly so... under then. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. All right. Really on Opabidia? Sure. Well, when you're making Opabinia, you are pushing for game. <laughs> yeah. Opabinia was such a good card. I honestly liked Paleozoic before Toad just because this card is so insane. All right. Yeah. Oleanades is a fine is one. Crazy. Yeah. You can like pop your own stuff if you really have to, which is fair. Like for lethal. Yep. 
And the cool thing as well is that uh, Paleo is one of the dice that people don't really talk about that benefits from Zeus, but it definitely does. Oh, yeah. Um, and a uh, fun fact, you don't have to send the monster or you don't have to use the monster that attacked to make Zeus, right? Yes. So that Opabidia, while you might be like, ah, it's a little slow. We can set all our traps anyway. Well, it might turn into a two-mat Zeus at the end of this turn. Right. Here comes toad number two. Oh, we are so close to lethal. Yeah, we have 54 plus 25. That's literally uh, 7,900 damage. If oh, I'm my mistaken. gosh. That's so painful. Oh, do we have something here? Should have kept Dynamicious. Mm, yeah, for sure. Ooh, so, so close. Okay, well, regardless, they're in just an unbelievable yeah. position from here. I don't know how a PK can play through Dweller, Double Toad, plus whatever other back row. Yeah. Honestly, the Dweller alone is enough. Right, so I bet you said it out. <laughs> I, I bet he did. Oh yeah. <laughs> my god! I mean, I didn't even didn't even make it. Said I don't I don't need to make Zeus. I realistically, what is Zeus adding to this board? <laughs> and Nathan yep. Anat's gonna and surrender. We're going to game three, perfect. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. This That's is so all stupid. things should be. Okay, okay. Yeah. This is... I, actually, I, I really, really like the shark engine. Uh, I actually saw it in somebody uh, playing one of my tournaments playing that engine, and I'm like, wow, this is really, really good, considering the fact that one of the biggest problems of Paleo Frog is getting to the Toad consistently turn one. Um, and, you know, there's other ways to potentially try and mitigate that, like Pot of Prosperity, but uh, we see them on Desires, so it's unlikely they're playing both. But uh, the shark engine definitely helps. It certainly does. I... Okay, this is fun and cool and sexy for sure. But. <laughs> <laughs> you have to win game three now. <laughs> yeah, you got to win game three, buddy. And your opponent's going to know exactly what you're up to. You're going to have to contend with Dragoon with a million set trap uh, cards that are exactly Fogblade. You're going to have to beat every important card in the world plus a whole bunch of sideboard options. I mean... Sure, you've got stuff you can play that improves your matchup, but PK is just such a powerful, adaptable strategy. It's going to be really hard to end their turn if you don't draw, like, exactly Lancia. Yeah, it's so hard. And again, you know, it's it's tough to incorporate very many hand traps into Paleo just because, you know, traps are your engine as well. So uh -huh. it's rough, but it's possible for sure. Just have to draw enough equalizers to really allow them to play mm -hmm. all right also i am curious as to what outs there are potentially to dragoon which is almost inevitable at this point yep all right unsurprisingly we have pk going first and pk oh, first on 41 i just noticed <laughs> funny oh no they're not uh one of these players is on 46. Oh, 40. Oh, that's right. I looked at the the 41 uh, on the bottom right there. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. Just, I didn't process. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, 46 for Paleo. Got to make room for the shark engine as well. That's like right. Desires. I'm based. <laughs> Whoa, that's like the Whoa. worst normal in the deck. What the fuck? <laughs> Oh! Oh, both the, um, oh no dante pass dante pass okay this does make rusty you can go for a cherubini and then sear bring back graph and then you can use cherubini to send a pk <laughs> it's not the worst but it's it's still full combo yeah yes it is it's uh it happens <laughs> For what it's worth this deck plays so many one-ofs that you don't want to draw we got the dragoon stuff you had the ba's Mm. It's inevitable that you'll draw these hands sometimes. Uh, this is the closest to a Highlander deck that I think has ever really been this competitive. <laughs> it's got like one Kagamucha Knight, one of the two three dangers. It's playing all these terrible free threes that you can summon hard once per turn, so it's only on one of them. Just silly. There's Rusty. All right. 
It's this rusty, is one of the yeah. rare hands that loses to interaction on Rusty, but looks like we do not have it out of 69-420. Yeah. Um, no Nibiru, no Lance, it looks like. So we'll see. If it's not hand traps, it's got to be some form of board breaker. Mm-hmm. Outcomes torn scales. We haven't used the on field effect yet, and we just added a boots to hand as well. So that's another rank three potentially. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they're going to go for potentially levier as well. Oh, pitching snake too. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't play good cards. And the PK player says, I can tell. Oof. All right. We're going to go for snake here. You know what would be really funny? Nibiru. Nibiru right here, yeah. It'd be adorable. You would probably wait until the Verte, but still very funny. Levier is what we've seen in the past. Yep. Yep. And uh, it's weird. I Most people I've seen are just straight up off Levier. Um, it's such a powerful like resource to keep your Phantom Knights in the graveyard, but it is like very high roll combo-y. But even in hands like this, where you start with literally nothing, it, it kind of makes it work sometimes. Yeah, we got Verte on board now. We have uh, gloves to potentially grab another uh, Reborn here. Also, uh, this cloak was summoned in defense off the Levier. Uh, when, and technically, you could put it in attack position and then boost your Rusty until the end of the next turn it's using huge on field effect. Enormous. Yeah, misplay. which can come. I've seen it come up. So I mean, it'd, never know, it'd come but... up here, right? Because it uh, it would contest frog then. Oh, it's true. Yeah, Toad is twenty two. Yeah, mm -hmm. it can come up. Oh so. no! Oh god, he's got it, huh? Did I miss them setting the rum? I didn't. All right, so we're gonna summon back uh, two Phantom Knights monsters. They're gonna turn into fours. Popping Rusty with the effect, or popping Breaksword with the effect of Bardish on summon. We'll go into Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon. And uh, we are about to see a very silly card. Yeah, so we could go for Requiem, but against Paleo, it doesn't seem amazing. Yes! Oh, Red Eyes oh, in the hand! We there we go, baby! <laughs> oh, now it really sucks! Because what are you going to do? You're going to set... Oh, you got a Silent Boots to add a card to your hand. Yeah, there's Silent Boots in Grief, yep. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to Silent Boots for the uh, Requiem. We have the card in hand for Dragoon. But that's it. Like, if you have a hand that is five trap cards, you probably win this game. Yeah, we'll see. Well, Swap Frog is here. That's weird. And I mean, of course. not shotgunning the negate means that you have to actually take this seriously, right? Yeah, because uh, fortunately, I believe the Rum spell is only in main phase and turn player priority that's does so in fact funny. still exist. Right. Yeah, so we weren't able to do it before. Going to do it now. And doing it this way also makes it so that you can't, or you could pop the swap frog here, which is fine. Yeah, but you're not going to be able to pop a back row off of the rusty. Yeah. I, and realistically, I think that X69 does not give one shit about if the swap frog ends up in the graveyard or not. Down it goes. Okay, and... so Dark Rebel or Requiem Xyz Dragon, for those of you who don't know, is as many monster negates as it has material. Uh, it's not a hard once per turn, not a soft once per turn. Uh, if you set no. five cards here, you might just walk with it. Ooh. Oh. Wow. That's, uh, that's four, pretty frightening. Four is still pretty good. Four so is how much, still pretty good. How much do you want to extend here is the question, right? Yeah, it's tough. Uh, we do still have a Rusty activation at minimum. Okay, there's Rusty. Uh, this is a pretty decent opportunity to strike, but it's not fantastic. Yeah, I mean, the real question is how are you going to out Dragoon? And actually, it was a heads-up play from the um, from the PK player by banishing Dark Magician mm -hmm. because it also plays around Ice Dragon's Prison. Since I imagine that's, that's why they did it, yeah. Yeah, so that, that was pretty heads up. I didn't really consider that until just now. But, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, and they said, oh, wow, that sucks. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's the that's the plan. And just linking off this 15 negate board to just go for a fucking unicorn. Well, you know, Kagamusha Knight drawn just a little bit too late. Let's target that one. The punish here is Trap Trick. 
But even that's not that big of a punish. It means you have to commit to all your traps right now. Yeah, I mean, we have such a stacked grave as well. It's pretty good for PK. It's just, it, uh, it's so hard to kind of determine who's in the driver's seat on this one. The PK player obviously has, like, the momentum, but depending on the trap cards, this could go very badly. All right, back in the deck it yeah. goes. And here we go. We got Shea Brigandine as well. Uh, we said, okay, well, if we don't have access to, like, negates for monsters, we can always just pop your back row with an access code. Yep, and we're going for that right here. Getting the extra effect monster plus attribute for access code. And this is a weird scenario. There's so many stupid PK traps in the grave that even if you, like, torrential strike this board... You it doesn't know, matter. They yeah. can just bring everything back. There's the yeah, not strike. only that, but also Dragoon just <laughs> lives. Right, here's Strike, which is okay, but that's 1,500 damage uh, that PK has to be less concerned with. It means that you so... have to, if you're PK, at least commit some stuff to the board, but uh, I don't think you're too concerned doing it. Yep, here comes Torn Scales and the Silent Brutes that was just searched. Mm -hmm. Needle Ceiling. That's like the worst Torrential in the world. It's pretty good here because it banishes the Torn Scales, but uh, the Dragoon, of course, it's got to be Strike exactly or a Torrential. Yeah. It... Well, Torrential Strike Strike. That's three really good ones, but the Dragoon lives. Uh, we're going to be able to reborn one of these and i believe using wing to bring back rusty wins the game oh we don't oh we don't have any what yeah, there's none right now that doesn't mean we can't get any she's another fall blade which i imagine is just going to be kept in hand okay uh so not the worst thing in the world dragoon still has the negate uh you've got one turn to figure out a way to out it but the outs in your deck are pretty fucking few and far between. Yeah, like, you have to, like, find an out and find a way to stabilize the board against an inevitable fall blade touching the graveyard due to it being kept in hand for pitch fodder, so... Ah, uh, it seems very, very unlikely, but... We'll I imagine see. you never burn Dragoon here, but even if you do, uh, the most they're gonna end on is a Toad which once they are about to go for it, you can kind of preempt by banishing the fog blade. It just, wow, it, it is just so difficult to come back from this position, it feels like. Yeah, I don't think you bite there if you're PK for sure. You just wait. Ah, Buzzsaw, yeah. Oh, That's a good one. Buzzsaw is a cool card, but unfortunately here, it's not going to really do it. Wow. And I imagine you would... You don't even have to. Yeah. You can just fog blade. Wow. Taking no chances. No need. This was a sick game and, and a tight match. But, I mean, Nathan has played so well this tournament. And even in this game, just, like, the little things that would otherwise give Paleozoic, Zoo, or Paleozoic Frog the ability to interact with your board... They've just been so disciplined, you know, ban the little things like banishing the Dark Magician, uh, being willing to link off like 16 monster negates just to rank up to an access code to cheat out back row. I mean, they, they have really played extremely well, and it's nice to see them rewarded for it. Yeah, it's great to see people being able to like pivot based on the matchup, because a lot of people just play statically the same, like regardless of the matchup. Mm -hmm. But I think that's one of the... Best indicators of somebody who really knows their deck inside and out, and we can just go battle phase, and here we go. Wow, that was... I, I mean, I really can't be upset with that. That was a really interesting game that kind of came down to the wire, um, and it was between two decks that just don't see a lot of competitive success, uh, one of which, which is really hard to play, and one of which was really innovative. Yeah, really, really cool stuff from the side of Paleo Frog and the side of PK. Um, we did see kind of the Dragoon effect on Rogue decks here, but that's to be expected. Um, but overall, yeah, I do think it was a solid performance from uh, both players here. Yeah. Well, folks, we are back.
It is time for the top four of the Chalice Slime Monthly. We have got four unbelievable decks in Top Cut. I'm talking about Cosmo Jenkins on VW, Giant Skyhawk on Fluffle, Clutch on Tri-Brigade Zodiac, and Nathan or not on Phantom Knight Burning Abyss. No Dragon Link. No A-Lister. No Trap Cards. <laughs> We're out here playing real Yu-Gi-Oh! Woo! And I am here with a real commentator. I'm talking about Sir Eminon. How are you doing today? We're ready for some Fluffle Gaming, baby. Let's go! Woo! I knew that putting that video up on my channel was a good idea. Skyhawk, make me proud. Also, you can lose if you want. Cosmo Jenkins is on an <laughs> absolutely sweet-ass VW list. Uh, it has been throttling the competition, playing a mid-range style gameplay and looking extremely competent doing it. And I just love the way VW has evolved. Uh, I yes. really enjoy the fact that it's, uh, you know, it goes for just a very modest board but it does it really consistently it does it well and it just is able to play every single turn which is great honestly whoever wins rps wins the match imo i cannot disagree with this more <laughs> ah oh. well vw oh. never changes baby evolve all you want sometimes it never changes <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Do you think Skyhawk's deck is capable of OTKing? It's going to be pretty close, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Especially yeah, through, man, two whole back row. I mean, they did oh, draw man. a patchwork, so I, I would say that brings the percentage from, like, 15% to, like, maybe 20%. Oh, okay. There's an Ash Blossom. All right. Okay. That's the best Ash target in the deck. All right. VW can still win. Uh, Copium. Okay. <laughs> Copium indeed. <laughs> As Toy Vendor makes its way to the graveyard. <laughs> and this is a historically a weakness of Fluffle, as Chad has pointed out. They, they just can't assemble lethal through open board states, you know? Uh, they, <laughs> <laughs> they really need their opponent to do so. Yeah, Fluffle, Fluffle really has struggled in the past to go second. It really yeah, just yeah, wants yeah. to, you know? Especially yeah, with but... the extra card that they get for drawing. It's just, it's hard. Yeah, it's it's rough so uh i'll just walk you through what we've seen so far um we've seen a lot of really interesting gaming uh skyhawk taking down his top 16 opponent on this deck uh using fright for cruel whale to make the two card drytron deck look like a disaster taking down the one the only jason leonard on his old deck dinosaur uh in top eight and his opponent cosmo jenkins running ragged through this tournament with a VW list that recurs Shen Shen, plays Zolkin, ends on Crystal Wing, Chu Che. I mean, it's two really sweet lists. It's unfortunate that game one is going to be decided like this. Yeah, this is what uh what we call the VW tax. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you got you got to expect that thirty percent of your games just <laughs> You're just uh, gonna lose out of the starting gate. <laughs> All right, we're just going for Tiger. Says if if one of these is Scythe, you got it, buddy. Enjoy it. Oh, please. Buff Chinglong. Is it a buff <laughs> set Chinglong? Okay, you ready? Chinglong Scythe right now. In FIP. Okay, oh, that's one. Term. Okay. Reasonable. Now, unfortunately, uh, more important than the pops is the penguin activation in Graveyard. Can we see a toy vendor send, please? Oh, or an edge imp, uh, edge imp chain. Uh, penguin. No, another penguin. That's a weird one. Oh, maybe that means the hand is so good that they didn't want to relinquish anything else. I wonder if the hand actually sucks ass. I think there's a <laughs> non-zero percent chance that this hand is not good. That is the uh, that's the glass half empty way of looking. Never at mind. It, I, never mind. Dog. All right. <laughs> Fuck me. I guess you know. Skyhawk oh my god. Is simply... Skyhawk is too beast. Uh, really, the point of playing Tiger is to bait out the infip so you can resolve dog. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Skyhawk uh, topped the Invitational with uh, with dinosaurs and said, I'm going, I'm going baby mode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's Sheep. Skyhawk was 100% certain Sheep is the best card in the deck. And uh, I'm inclined right. to agree. This thing looks crazy. Special summon a Fluffle from your hand or graveyard? You gotta be fucking with me. Wow. You could use Sheep to special the Penguin back. Okay, alright, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's interaction. 
It's interaction. I wonder what the other cards in hand are. We also have um, Sabres and Graves still as well. We could live. And as we've seen, sometimes all VW needs is one good turn. Interesting seeing um, Bell in the main deck as well. Yeah, that's so shocking. Ash, Imperm, Bell. That's what we've had to play through this turn. Oh, and we have made it out of the turn. Cosmo Jenkins is going to get a shot at it. All right. All we need is to draw any VW name. It's literally And we any have name. a chance to play. <laughs> Now the question is, did Skyhawk draw um, oh. Scythe? Oh. Well, regardless of if he drew Scythe, I think we'll be seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, golly. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is uh, Monka W. Ooh, Cosmic. Oh. Oh, is this the it... Scythe? No. It is not. It's, oh, it's not. That would have been funny. All right, we'll set the Scythe Room deck with the Dagda. And Droplet was the set Drop card. It. This I man mean, opened everything. The man opened everything but a fucking linear play. <laughs> You're like, whoa, this person opened Ash, Cosmic, Imperm. Yeah, idiot. That doesn't do anything. <laughs> Still bricking. This is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and that's SVW. That's VW, baby. That's VW. Oh, gosh. Ugh. Man. Anything, please. Just normal Nyan Nyan and Crash. Do something. <laughs> what, if, what if we... What if we... e Telly for Nyan Nyan and then Tribute Set Lili? Perfect. Okay, this is something. We we probably have a guy in our hand, right? Like a Lao Lao, maybe? We can do something uh, with that. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, the, not, I'm is, trying is, here, is baby. The, is the plan actually to crash? Oh, right? okay, all right. Oh, you know, we could get the Chuche. Something might be like a ZC, maybe? Oh, oh my God, we fuck. drew <laughs> we everything broke. but... Oh, but the hand effects. so we're doing this so that we could maybe have Chuche online. Are you oh, kidding oh, me? Yeah, wait, no, he's going to let the Nian get banished off Utelli, so Chuche's alive. Oh, and you could you could use Nian to put one of your good cards that you banished back in the deck. All right. Oh, my God. Skyhawk, you got to play through one pop. <laughs> yeah. Can, oh. can he do it? <laughs> what if he just normals dog and goes to combat? <laughs> they have to Chuche, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> they're on 47. <laughs> they're on 47. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I've just been a giggling joker this entire time, chat, but I don't know what commentary you want out of this. Yeah, this is this is what happens when VW um, opens like this. What, what's the line? amount of time. This is what happens when a stoppable force meets a movable object. <laughs> Fright for repair! Perfect. Oh, my All God, right. that's so crazy, actually. <laughs> You can bring back Penguin. You can bring back Dolphin. <laughs> penguin it is. All right. We can Penguin, Summon Dog. We got we got everything. <laughs> this is so we silly. just go battle phase if we wanted to. After we're we're literally going to special dog and be like, combat. <laughs> Game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. 16, 17, 15 is 48. Yep, that is game. Ugh. Uh, if they eat, yeah, it's still enough. All right, and Cosmo Jacob says, all right, fine, let's fucking go to game two. Uh, amazing, Skyhawk, amazing. one game away, baby. <laughs> Quality <laughs> game one here. I will say, um, Skyhawk's been playing very well today, uh, and I think you, you saw that in that game, right? Like, Absolutely, uh, yes. Like, I, I think that there was a lot of, like, when Skyhawk normal summoned a dog after baiting out all the <laughs> spell traps, that was really fantastic. Yes, yes. When, when he paid Alpha Cretin to put the <laughs> Chuche on top of the deck, that was, I mean, that was something. Check PayPal, by the way. Yeah. All right, anyways. <laughs> I do wonder, like, if it was worth it maybe for Cosmo Jenkins to, like, set the Chinglong if they had it in their opening hand. Like, yeah. with the hope of it having it get popped. Because like it's, 
you can I'm imagine great. that. Like, I, I don't know. It depends on how much you know about like what Skyhawk's playing and how he plays it. Because like if you know right. he's on Fluffle and you know that he always goes for the damn tiger early on to clear back row, then you're like, oh yeah, of course I'll set it. But it it's just so tantalizing to keep in hand because you could just activate it and then any name is full combo. Yes, two thirty percent in a row. Let's fucking go. Well. Congratulations on Fluffle for making it to final. Oh, wow. Oh, this is, no. This is so sad. Okay, you know what? We were talking a lot about how Virtual World has innovated, how the deck looks good again, how it plays a more mid-range style gameplay. Actually, the deck fucking sucks. I lied. This is the worst <laughs> deck I've ever seen in my entire life. For such little payoff, why would you voluntarily play a deck that every third game bricks it's like playing magic the gathering you just flood <laughs> every fourth or fifth time man i actually like vw so much myself and i pay me too <laughs> pain i own the deck in paper like man it's oh. rough mm -hmm. all right vw can win copium they just have to have exactly <laughs> everything me. of course we get to open with dog for the 15th game in a row Normal dog, Man. yep. Oh, sheep. You hate to see them get sheep because you go, ah, so yeah, you have everything. everything. Else. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Oh, a toy vendor. Very surprising. Man, it's crazy how infrequently we also like see the wings uh, grave effect resolve in comparison to how like seemingly reliant it was back in the day. Yeah, like uh, old the deck is just if you weren't going bare so wings, good you were now. losing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, speaking, speaking of, speaking of, of <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Never mind. Io, wait, Io, wait, Io does, Io does nothing against this deck. <laughs> wait, Io does. Wait, it, wait. It Io's does stop crazy. Polly. It That's does the stop important patchwork. part. All right. Do we have other plays? I'm pretty sure Io is pretty good against the fusion deck in most cases, but... How are you there's... fucking cross-sheeping? There's an Io on the field! No. No, oh, there's no. Dendry. That can only mean one thing. No, come on. That can only mean <laughs> one thing. <laughs> All right, we're going for wings first. We're going to pop Toy Vendor. <laughs> Ooh! Ooh! Oh, because it banishes as effect. Oh, perfect. Oh, my God. Broken. Ghost Bell and Reaper so... Bell coming in hot. Wait, VW can win Hopium! Oh, so I think that was gonna try and search for a scythe to fusion summon, but guess not. Yeah. 700 damage, let's go! <laughs> oh no. What if I told you it's not just scythe <laughs> that it could be? Uh oh. They can't even Cosmic here because of the fucking IO. They're going for Chuche early. Sure. <laughs> All right. What if I told you there's another card that this deck plays that can perform a fusion summon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, are they actually on uh, the trap Necrofusion? <laughs> they are extremely on Necrofusion. Oh. <sighs> All I don't right. think it's, like, okay right now, right? We're missing edge imps. Yeah, yeah we have no edge imps. <laughs> okay, oh, wait, wait, wait. Name. Let's go. VW can win Hopium, baby. Let's go. So the way we win this game is we bricked not because we didn't draw enough names, but because we didn't draw a way to get to Qinglong. Uh, and all we had to do was live one turn with IO set. Uh, we could do it. Yeah. Actually, oh. maybe we couldn't do it. Actually, uh, fuck me. What do they say about this? Pissing me off so much at what locals is <laughs> I know everybody's doing it, but nobody wants to admit it. Is they pre-side Lancia <sighs> into really the deck? Lancia. Jeez. Uh, what 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 do you do here, buddy? I you're you're the VW master. End of main phase one. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is like funny and cool and sexy, but like it also doesn't do anything at all. <laughs> like you still need to find a way to win the game at Fluffle without polymerization. Right. And that's yeah. Hard. And it looks like we can get to Shenshen and resolve GG to add back. So this is going to be hard for Fluffle to win. Lots of those back row are killer.
<laughs> like torrential tribute. <laughs> I mean, we're just we're just Shen Shen gaming out here. Cosmos won a lot of games doing this. <clears throat> Even if IO lapses, like this is not terrible. Yeah, this is definitely fine. It really is Shen Shen pass, <laughs> but that's eh, Shen Shen's pretty good. It's a pretty good card. I mean, IO is a good card too. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's it's. It's Shen Shen. <laughs> it's just Shen Shen. So how do we get to Necrofusion? We... Just draw so... it. Smile. Oh, Toy Vendor discards for cost. So we do have to just draw an Edge Imp. Yeah. All right. Exactly chain. There? Show me chain. Show me chain. Chuche's not alive either. For now. All right. And oh, we're going to game three. That's, that's not it. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, so we've seen two really good games. The first game, um, the VW player did not get to play because they bricked. The second game, Skyhawk didn't get to play because of Io. And that is Yu-Gi-Oh! as Kazuki Takahashi intended. Floodgates, bricking, everything that everybody could ever ask for. Yeah, for sure. Apparently, the other uh, top four match is in game three. That sounds interesting. Perfect. All right. I'm actually... I. You know, I'm a little biased, but I hope that uh, Zoo Tri Brigade makes it in. I think that list is so absolutely bonkers. Well, I would be happy to see either deck make it. I personally like PK a lot, but both those decks are just super, super cool. So, we'll see. All right. Let's go and see how Skyhawk's going to do. He's selected to go first here. Dog, three games in a row. Every game. It's it's the Alistair of the deck. They just always have it. It's the Alistair. It's the Overraptor. It's the Tour Guide. Do they have the Ash? Infip. Hmm. Infirm. That's an interesting one. Sure. It seems okay. It's so hard to evaluate how good that is when they have four of the cards in hand. Yeah. Uh, at minimum, normal dog seems like a rough one. Oh, Polly. In the imperm column, bro! It wasn't set, though, so yeah, yeah. it shouldn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well. All right, what do we fuse with? We fuse sabers. With, uh, sabers, so not Shane, unfortunately. Uh, that said, Fright for Whale kind of turns on the entire deck. Yeah, it does, definitely. That other effect is just crazy. Ooh, B-A-P-K has won. Ooh, let's go. All right. All right, just repair to the graveyard. What would be the best repair target here? Are we going whale pass? Mm, we'll see. I don't even know what's good to summon here off of it. Why would we go whale pass? <laughs> so we draw the necrofusion? What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. Waiting with a uh, bated breath here. <laughs> yeah, what do you what do you got, buddy? What's the plan? We special sheep. We link off for cross sheep. Set one pass. <laughs> and it's necrofusion. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Take a while thinking. Yeah. This deck is real yes, hard to play. Definitely. Especially when you get stopped on your best normal summon. Oh, no. Giant Ooh. Skyhawk says, my turn to brick. Divine Justice. Big think here. That means he's got something to do, but hardly optimal. Okay, so here's where we see and witness <laughs> the VW player uh, get the 30% Three times in a row. <laughs> no way. Zero percent chance. Even I, even calling last time a brick is... Oh my god! Oh. No, no fucking way is that the play. 
Holy this shit. Is Holy crusty. shit, oh. a moly! Oh. Okay, so Fright for Meister is, this is the one that Skyhawk was talking up. You can pop a card on your side of the field and then summon a monster with the same level, I think, and maybe type an attribute. We get Wait. Lilith. We fire Lilith. We select okay. three Necro Fusion, and then we pass the turn. It's something. It's definitely better than just passing on Whale. It's just yeah. We've got like a couple material. <laughs> I mean, it's not awful. Uh, it kind of forces you to be a little bit proactive because of the way the chain works. But um, you get to go for a like an AOE pop here. Yeah, that's definitely not bad. Ooh, God, and you're going to have to fire it here pretty much. Ooh, that's really bad news. Yeah, Kowloon's the one the one way that VW can get to a name without relying on the North Summon and Yo, Desires. Oh, Desires, Chuche, Jesus. It does not get much better than this. So what do we have in Grave? We have Sabres and Dog, exactly. So Yeah. It's pretty miserable. Ah, wow. And Lulu as well. That's uh, that's pretty good. And you can't do it the way you want, right? You want to pop the Chuche in response to the in Lulu response, activation? Yeah, it's a separate chain. Yep. Yeah. And you can't like do it preemptively because that just loses to any normal summon. So very, wow. very tough position. Not great, not great. So I do wonder when you fire it off at this point. It's a thinker for sure. I will say I definitely don't know the deck well enough to comment on when the optimal time to Necrofusion is. <laughs> Ooh, normally Nian as well. <clears throat> There's ways to force the Necrofusion as well if you're on the side of VW. Mm -hmm. If you play, like, well, obviously they're on Coral Dragon, I would assume. Well, it's bad here too, right? Because if you go to Coral Dragon, you activate Coral Dragon, like, to pop the set card. You have to chain the Necrofusion, and if you summon Tiger off of, like, a Chain Link 2 Necrofusion, it'll just straight up miss timing. Oh, a tiger can miss timing. I did not. It's notice. a win, baby. Got to do it on no, the open game stage. No, not like that. Oh. Yep. Wow, that's that's so sad, actually. <laughs> well, oh, that's geez. the um. <laughs> those are the results of 2016 card design. That is a weird Ju one, Juju. Yeah, I guess actually it makes more sense than Coral because if you. If you summon Coral, you don't have to wait for them to use Coral effect. You can just fire off Necrofusion on summon, and they can pop the Chuche. Then they don't have a BW name to target because they just normal summon to the Nian. So, so on this open game state, Skyhawk just straight up has to fire Necrofusion targeting Chuche, right? If you don't, then it's going to be rough. Yeah. I don't know when you're able to use it. Hmm. Yikes. You know, for what it's worth, this is a really cool list, and I did want to see Skyhawk take it all. Um, but I have no problem watching VW in finals. I think this deck is so cool. Yeah. And you know what? He got all of his bricks out, too. So... Yeah. <laughs> well, we were asking earlier, why would you willingly play a deck that can... Uh, or that does brick 30 to 40% of the time, and... The answer is just draw the Imperial Order. We should have uh, asked Skyhawk that question, too. <laughs> Man, unfortunate for sure. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, take a quick look at the predictions. Yep, the geniuses in my chat have given Fluffle a 91% win rate. Oh, man. I should have voted for VW. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you? You you had it. You knew. I mean, I'm a little bit biased. I like VW a lot. Mm. But... 
Next time, Skyhawk should take this extremely high-level tournament a little bit more seriously. I gotta agree. <laughs> Alright, here's Charge Warrior. And, like, this is the rough part of VW. Like, even if Skyhawk is able to get a sick pop-off here, it, it really does not matter. Um, VW is just going to be swimming in enough cards to just overwhelm over the course of a couple of turns. Ooh, a cool play here would be if uh, Cosmo Jenkins overlaid for Fan Fan. Because <laughs> that, that would definitely prompt the Necrofusion. And then... Uh, if you, like, go Tiger to try and pop Chuche, they can, like, chain the Chuche because now they have enough uh, fodder for the Banished. Um, or they could just Juju. That's that's good enough, too. Uh, I guess you probably chain it. You, you can't go into Tiger, can you? Maybe you make Whale number two? <sighs> Has to be, I guess. I don't know. Definitely... I summon the blue eyes white Not dragon in position. attack mode. Now Whoa, what, I take what the fuck? All Hold up, what? Points. What was that? Why is it face uh, down? It banishes, it banishes face down. Really? Yeah. What a silly card. <laughs> All right. Behold my second big ass whale. Wow, Chuche here is just so painful. <laughs> you can Chuche the whale and they can be like, ah, well, you know, I guess I'm losing my entire field here. And we saw Lily being activated as well. Or, sorry, not activated, uh, searched earlier, I should say. Yeah. So we're going to go... In response to Chuche, whale number one and then whale number two. I guess that's a soft. That's very funny. So we're going to send Kraken to the grave. We're going to send Tiger to the grave. We're going to lose our whale. We're going to keep this whale. And I guess we could send Meister or we could send the whale if we want. Sending Meister with a charge. That's kind of sick. Until you see the Lily. Yeah, that, uh, that'll do it. Yeah, we knew about this one as well. And there's oh, also yes. Swan Wu and Grave as well. There's just everything. <laughs> Guys, but can CD, you imagine uh, a Necro Fusion that's a continuous trap? Uh, it seems, hmm, it seems yeah. a little weak. Uh, it would have to banish face up, I think, to see any play. Yeah. All right, are we going to see the Dragoon out? Oh yes, please. <laughs> I, is don't there? I don't think there's another way for them to get over Fright for Whale. You like, I guess, Vermilion Pop it. Woo! Oh, there let's he is, go. baby! Oh, let's go! Utopia <laughs> Beyond. <laughs> this is the best card in Yu-Gi-Oh. I am convinced. <laughs> it's so shit. It's so bad. <laughs> oh my god, Shen Shen Beyond. Card... Same board as last time. This card is too funny. So, hilariously, I think Fright for Fusion does win Skyhawk the game. <laughs> oh. Well. What do we have? Well, actually, yeah, there is quite yep. a loaded graveyard. Oh, but there's no edge imps. But there's no edge imp, yeah. And we make Zeus here, too. Yeah. Yeah. So it's Zeus, Shen Shen, Chu <laughs> yeah, adding back with BG. Seems, seems a little impossible. Uh, it'd have to be Shining Draw. <laughs> Wait. No! Wait. Huh? No! <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> no, he spent no, too long that is in not the tank. Real. Oh, no shit. All right, okay. What just happened? So, <laughs> so he Bro, spent too long what? doing his combo and ran out of time. It looks like Skyhawk is in chat and said, no, no, I'm not fucking taking that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right. Good guy, Skyhawk. Oh, my God. Wow. You know, it sure has been a rough and tumble tournament. From Giant Skyhawk losing to Mystic Mine in round one to losing to VW in top four. We have come a long way today, you and I. 
The viewers and us at commentary. We've seen a lot of extremely silly decks. We had a super stacked top cut full of huge, uh, diverse play styles. And now, after seven rounds of Swiss and four rounds of top cut, we are down to your final two. Cosmo Jenkins, who you just watched win a best of three in which they bricked three times. And Nathan or not, who has been taking names with Phantom Knight since the start of this tournament. I am joined by the only individual that I would trust telling me what the VW cards do. Sir Eminon, how are you doing? Doing phenomenally. Love that, uh, you know, we got the Phantom Rage decks here in the finals, or at least the decks that got uh, pushed to the forefront of the uh, metagame, if you will. Um, Super, super cool decks. Very excited to cast VW versus PK. I love both of these decks personally and cannot wait to see what goes down. It's actually enthralling to be casting a match with no A-lister, no Dragon Link, no Zeus, I'd... <laughs> no Overaptor, no Lost World. I mean, <laughs> these decks are cool. And I'm very happy that this is the last a quote-unquote major event that I'll be tuning into before Leov comes out and throws the entire metagame into disarray. Could not have asked for anything better to go out on than th watching VW Brick twice. <laughs> yeah, let's see it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. All right, I have let them know that I am ready. And uh, Cosmo Jenkins, Nathan or not, ball is in your corner. It is now time for the final round of the May 2021 Chalice Line Monthly. So, shockingly, I don't think too much relies on the die roll. Obviously, VW uh, wants to go first. You know, uh, always important to do so. But the way VW plays now, it, it doesn't really have too much of a problem uh, with a type of gameplay that's a little more one-for-one uh, -one focused. PK doesn't give a shit. It can go first or second. It can do whatever it wants. Uh, it can play through pretty much anything, and that will be put to the test here. We've opened Kaloon, and let's see if we've got a name as well. Yeah, and we also see stuff like Dark Ruler nice. No More in the main deck of PK, so that'll also help with things. Uh, and we see Desire's City very, very often. <laughs> um, and Ooh, that's but the Ash Blossom. Ooh, okay. Wow, they held the Ash through the Kaloon. See, that's a discipline that I don't have because I'm not very good at Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, let's see what the punish could be. It would be the Hard-Drawn Lulu, perhaps. Uh, really, any name here is pretty decent. Hard-Drawn Lulu it is. <laughs> what do you let's know? go, baby. All right, what, what, what did we know? say? 60% of the time, it works every time. <laughs> wow, oh, this gosh. is immaculate. Perfect gameplay. <laughs> All right, we're going to send the Qinglong to the graveyard with the Lulu, and with the back half of the Lulu, we're going to add a ZC to hand. That telegraphs a little bit. This is a dope open. Yeah, and for those of you who are wondering, um, the conversation about ashing the Kowloon, it's because of that uh, third effect where uh, you can actually mill the top three cards or reject to the grave since it checks in resolution and not an activation. Um, so that's something to take note of. But here we are. We have GG coming down next which is, uh, you know, pretty straightforward. Uh, we also have Ching Long being able to be used next. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is as good as it gets. Uh, for what it's worth, um, Phantom Knight excels at playing through uh, board setups. The setups that we've seen from Cosmo Jenkins have been uh, very powerful. You know, I don't want to discount just how good uh, the end boards look. But they've also looked beatable in a way that, like, double VFD VW never was. Um you know, Shen Shen plus Crystal Wing is hard to play through, for sure, but it's not impossible. And if any deck can do it, it's going to be something like Phantom Knight with 15 billion extenders, um, combo pieces that dodge so much of the removal that's being played, like just try and chuche a Cherubini and see what happens. Uh, I'm interested to see how this plays out. Right now we've got the material for a Zulkin, but uh, I don't know if they'll be going for it. Do we have... The spell trap required to set is always the question. Um, we've seen people main deck stuff like there can be only one in this deck uh, recently, mm -hmm. just to add more spells and traps that are like good to set. 
And I assume that's the reason why Imperm is in the list as well. Um, and here we go. Perfect. All right, Zulkin triggers now. I do like drawing off of Coral, giving you the idea that, like, maybe they don't have the card and they're fishing for it. But, of course, you would never do this line if you didn't yeah, have the never, ability to yeah. go Zulkin. And this is, the last time we saw Zulkin in, like, any sort of meta capacity was what? Like, Metal Foes, Magic Metal Spectre Foes, format? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you were, like, making it with, like, Gofu and Adamantite. It's crazy to see now. Yeah, right. So the draw was presumably Lulu off of the Coral Dragon being pitched mm -hmm. for Qinglong. Going for Lao Lao. Jeez. We also haven't used Nian Yan yet. So we can go for that. This Two is definitely months. Shen Shen. So. so this is going to be minimum Shen Shen. Do we know what that set card is? Uh, we do not. So We've seen a lot of really powerful uh, traps from Cosmo Jenkins. Nothing like uh, nothing like Solemn Strike. Um, but Imperm we saw in the last game. Uh, we saw called uh, buys over cosmic. the course of the tournament. Cosmics. Yeah. Cosmic yep. Cyclone. Yep. There's a lot of really good stuff that it could be. All right, down comes Stardust, and the hits keep coming. That's uh, one of the most frustrating parts about this deck, is even if it's interrupted, it can recycle all of the cards super easily. And uh, part of the benefit of this is we can use Nyan Yen to put any of these banished cards off of Desires back into the deck, and we also have the requisite material in the banished zone to activate that Chuche a little bit later. Yep, this also lets the Chuche and Grave be activated to lower the Wow Wow, so we can still make Shen Shen. So we are in a good spot here. And this is just uh, what we want to see if we're Cosmo Jenkins, you know? You've drawn a couple yeah. of cards, you get to ZC at end step, uh, you're ending on Shen Shen, Crystal Wing, Chuche. And if your opponent outs that, they out that. You can try again next turn. Um, but one downside to playing against Phantom Knight is uh, there will not be a next turn. They are <laughs> pretty all in from the get-go. Yeah, the game plan is to not die. And yeah. that can be definitely pretty hard when you have... Uh, you know, Dragoon, you have uh, the Arc Requiem. We've got Arc main Rebellion. deck Dark Ruler no more. Yeah. Although, to be fair, if you're getting Dark Ruler, you're pretty happy about that because you are guaranteed to live. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we have pretty much everything we want from VW. This is the modest but still strong setup. I love that it's... Oh, well, speaking of the main deck Dark Ruler no more, there it is. Do we have the IO? We saw it game three against... Or game two against... Skyhawk, and it looks like we do not. Well, ah. that makes things very simple for... Uh, well, here we go. Day. <laughs> Dark Rulers <laughs> into Tour Guide from the Underworld. Into Infib. Oh. All right. As expected, right. there are some good cards in here. And Nathan says, uh, you forgot TCG Seagok? Ah, oh, they have Kagamusha Knight in hand, don't they? Oh, I see. Uh, that well, actually is a bit of a problem. Yeah. It's not going to matter here, particularly. Yeah, the end result will be the same. It's just a matter of whether uh, Cosmo Jenkins would have fired off the Imperm on the tour guide after seeing Kagamucha Knight, which maybe you hold it for Rusty afterward, but it's kind of a hard call to make. Mm -hmm. Um. I think if you're PK, you're fine with this i mean you still have to play through chuche as well though this is kind of a benefit um, for pk in this individual instance but for game two we'll see if we can get it remade with the right parameters yeah that would definitely be ideal so they're gonna set one do they have like a snake in hand maybe uh so setting one just means that you're able to play around the uh chuche uh, targeting the... Right, yeah, the Cherubini, because you can just send the set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what Cosmo's saying about TCG Seagok not being part of it. Uh, we do stipulate you have to use the TCG rule set. Yeah. So Seagok, we'll just, by uh... the way, stands for Simultaneous Effects Go on Chain. Um, so in the TCG... You would have Tour Guide Chain Link 1, Kagamucha Knight Chain Link 2 before your opponent gets to the window. In the OCG, your opponent can actually respond to the Tour Guide, um, as we saw right there with the Imperm before the Kagamucha Knight got the chance to uh, trigger. So those are the differences.
But yeah, down comes Graf off this cherry beanie. The question is, how are we making it past Chuche on just like Rusty? Yeah, it's it's a rough one. Um, all right, uh, Seer Model Branch of the Burning Abyss is a good start. Ugh. The problem with this deck is it's got so many resilient lines just because Cherubini is such an unbelievably pushed card. Uh, can't be destroyed while you control other cards functionally. Sends for cost, etc., etc. But Rusty Bardish is so fragile. It is just, ah, it's not yeah. on summon. It's an ignition effect. You don't get first crack at it. And if you are uh, Cosmo Jenkins here, I think you're just jamming the Chuche as quickly as possible. It's such an enormous choke point. And the thing is that we've been talking about this whole time, right? That like Pika has infinite extenders. They can play through like pretty much any board. But if your opponent is savvy and knows that pretty much most of the extenders all funnel into the same endpoint, uh, mm -hmm. they can just interrupt you at the right time. And this is one of the best times to do it. This is a rough one for sure. Uh, it's got to be like cosmic in hand, but looks like nothing. Uh, back comes Cherubini, but I don't know what you're going to be able to accomplish with that. You can get over the Zulkin maybe. It's so hard, yeah. I mean, we didn't really have any PKs going for us. Yeah, Nathan or not's and... gonna surrender. So, um, while it didn't end up mattering in that game, uh, the infinite impermanence, of course, probably maybe would have been held even if they'd seen the Kagamucha Knight as CL two. Uh, we are gonna get this game remade with the proper parameters for game two. Yep. So we will be back shortly. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, let's see how chat has decided. they are going to win yeah no emperor stove's correct it can absolutely matter in a different game uh didn't come up here but um the ability to chain block with cognitive mucha knight is extremely important and the addition of tcg seagock to edo pro was a really important uh step forward for the software um because early on there was a huge liability for generator players based on the way that har interacted with tcg seagock if you ever uh <laughs> Had to deal with that. Yeah, I didn't actually know that um, Edo Pro had a feature for differentiating those uh, TCG Seagock buildings. That's good to know. All right. That's we very are nice. Back in the game. Chained. And here's a big shock. Uh, looks like PK is going first for game two. So, unsurprisingly, Phantom Knights of Torn Scale is uh, a decent normal summon. Uh, it's not as good as Tour Guide from the Underworld, but it's still fine. The one place that uh, Phantom Knight kind of chokes uh, out of the board is it has an absolutely debilitating and unsolvable weakness to exactly Nibiru. Uh, if you just Nibiru pretty much as early as possible, it becomes really, really hard for this deck to do anything about it. Yeah, one of the cool things they like doing in this deck in particular is, if possible... Uh, sending gloves off Cherubini because it yeah. allows you to because usually the rusty is going to be on the fifth summon or greater if people nibiru you there then you can gloves send a trap and then bring back the uh, rusty now i've also seen some people actually wait um after rusty resolves to use nibiru which sometimes can actually be good as well because mm -hmm. it does just prevent the end board and effectively you know end the pk player's turn on just one fob blade which is you know far from impressive certainly uh I think we missed there the Libic sent to the graveyard, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, I, uh, I I can't yeah. believe they are that deep on on Burning Abyss monsters. Yeah, it's for hands where you draw a Seer or a Graph. Um, that way you can get them out of your hand without using the special summon effects. So you can still get value. Um, one of the things that is actually cool that I was testing was um, Edgem Sabres in this deck. Mm -hmm. um, because you can put back not only the BAs if you draw them, but you can put back Red Ice Fusion, which is like definitely relevant. Um, All right, we're going for the uh, the Ragged Gloves here. We're going to send a copy of Wing, and because our Ragged Gloves was banished, we can Special Summon back from the graveyard, this Torn Scale. And we have seen this a couple of times over the course of this, uh, and I imagine we'll see it again here. Um, Nathan or not is on a really combo-heavy build, which is going to Levier at this point in order yes. to bring back one of these. Just keep them all in rotation so that it's not all or nothing. You have some rebuildability, and uh, realistically, it doesn't have that much of an impact on your end board anyway. You want two threes on your side of the field to go into Breaksword 
and you want to be able to spend your last two monsters, the Levier and the Cherubini, to go into like a Verte. And here's where it's tricky, right? Because they could go for Appaloosa if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, so like if they had Nibiru, if the VW player had Nibiru, then it'd be pretty awkward to fire it off because most of the PK builds play Link Spider, and we saw there was already the trap in Grave as we're activating it right now. So that's a way into Verite after the fact. So it's Ooh. hands like this where Nibiru can sometimes be a bit tricky as far as timing is concerned. But here comes Break Sword, and that can only mean one thing. So um, we talked about this a little bit uh, off screen, I think, but uh, this this deck has a real issue with the card you're about to see. Um, certainly all of the individual virtual worlds are powerful, but against effects like the big Requiem, uh, they really fall flat. And I think we will get to see if they are able to accomplish anything here or not. Um, We'll go for the Verte. This is your last opportunity to fire off the nib. And uh, they don't have it, it looks like. Not All right. too surprising. Okay, down come... Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, gosh. Dark Magician in hand. That's miserable. Okay, so from this position, uh, we probably have to Silent Boots. You had to keep a card in hand. Uh, we will go ahead and grab that Rum. And then we will pass back to our opponent. Whoa, not grabbing the rum. I guess we drew the rum and the Dark Magician, and we're still able to end on this board. Yeah, they actually uh, set the rum off of the Rusty there. So I must have missed it. Um, yeah. I like that you can kind of pivot what you set off of Rusty based mm -hmm. on what you know you're going to search off of Silent Boots. That way you can get better pitch fodder for Dragoon. It's one of those like heads-up plays you can mm -hmm. do. And uh, you really don't give a shit about the Kaloon because uh, after it resolves, you are absolutely going to either pop whatever your opponent... Oh, that's a cool Ooh. one. What your opponent sets with the effect of Rusty, uh, or you are going to negate every single activation in hand. Now that is interesting. Ooh, that's weird. Yeah, that, that one gave Nathan just a little bit of pause... And as a result, now there's a card on field you can Lao Lao. You don't really want to pop Zhang Wu with uh, Rusty's effect because it's so powerful in the uh, in the graveyard. Yeah. Also, starting off with Lao Lao is never the, the not one a great you want. sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, looks like he's gonna throw caution to the winds here. Uh, using Ban uh, the Rum Phantom Knight's Force to go into Requiem, gonna trigger Bardish. And as we noted in top four, banishing Dark Magician is the cost for that uh, in order to you know, insulate against IDP and the really powerful traps that we know Cosmo Jenkins is on, at least out of the board. Yep, and popping the VW name, now having to deal with Dragoon, plus Fall Blade, plus three additional monster negates. Okay, that's a pretty good one. You might actually have to negate this with a Dragoon, just because it represents uh, stopping your 15 monster negates here. Yeah, this is the one I was expecting uh, off the Kowloon, but it makes sense if they already drew it. Mm-hmm. Um, two uh, two face up spell traps. You really don't want to send to the graveyard to try and uh, uh, sort of fiend a name activation from your hand without the requiem on field. But now you have to contend with this card. It's just a million negates. It is really just like six negates. It's Appaloosa but based. Yeah, it's Appaloosa, but it actually gets the card off the board. <laughs> yeah, which uh, you know that's really what you want. Here we go for Chinglong. We're gonna try our best here. I mean, it's got to be like a Forbidden Droplet, right? That's pretty much the only thing that does yeah. it. Oh, they had Chuche in hand. That is interesting. That is interesting. Because if this Xuan Wu on board was a Chuche instead, there's a there's a world in which you could maybe have like normal to VW name, Chuche modulated, and yep. then pop the Requiem. But it looks like that's not the case, and we're going to game three. Wow, this is a this is a very difficult one. Wow, this is a really difficult one. Oh, <sighs> well, we got what we signed up for. You know, these are two pretty interactive decks, all things considered. This is so um, tense. So, I, I am glad yeah. that VW won the uh, the die roll because it does feel like had uh, Phantom Knight won, they could have easily walked with the set just based on the back of the really frustratingly bad way in which Requiem interacts with different VW names. Um, they will have the stuff to play through uh, a game three board it's just a question of if they find it or not and if vw bricks always a consideration as well <laughs> yeah for sure it's cool that both of these decks have very clear strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. um i think that's like the hallmark of what people would consider 
uh, at the very least interactive um, if you don't want to go so far as to say fun but mm -hmm. um, these are definitely decks that I would say are on the fairer side of things so if you're the phantom knight player I wonder what you're boarding into here probably some number of like spell trap removal options you're kind of light on them in the main deck and yeah realistically the way you're probably losing the game is something like a chuche doing some sort of shenanigan uh also of course the uh game ending hand traps against vw are extremely good as well desires is a nice one get it in before the right lancia away. comes down right away and desires is so good in this deck I really think this is like one of the few decks where Desires is probably better than Prosperity, um, just because like you really need as you need many cards. different yeah cards as possible to play with. Okay, so it's not pretty, but this does do it. Um, yeah, normal Lulu, special Lao Lao. Uh, I'm I'm very glad that this is the the uh, last match that we're getting. It's going to be kind of a crusty board from VW. It's going to be a questionable setup on the crackback. Uh, uh, just a lot could go wrong from either perspective here. Very winnable from either person, given the Lulu into Lao Lao open. Yeah, they are treading dangerous waters here, though, because this is not what you want to be starting with. No, no. Um, Yeah, it's rough. All right, so we do have the Qinglong and Graveyard. That's the send for the Lao Lao. Um, what do you do from this position? You're a VW genius. Well, it really just depends on what else is in hand. Four cards are unknown, so it depends on how many non-tuners you have access to, because right now we are pretty pretty low on the non-tuners. Yeah. So going for Qinglong, not surprising. Do you like Ash here? Ash here seems pretty good, um, if they have it. Yeah. It's interesting because we did see the Ash and Desires game one. Ooh, oh, pitching second which... Desires. Huh? We've all been there, folks. This is why you only nice play that... one copy. It's optimal. Oh, obviously. That's why it's nice, though, with this deck, is that like, you just always pitch it, because, mm -hmm. you know, Qinglong, Xuanwu. Yeah. Ooh, chat's right, advocating a comes... reverse Lulu. What do you think? Uh, it might be the play, It's honestly. not terrible. It's not awful. Yeah. And right, so we're going for Charge Warrior here. We're going to just fiend a card off the top of our deck. Chat, count along with us. How many summons? This is four. Zulkin will be five. But we're not going for it. We're All going right. for maybe just Shen Shen. Shen Shen pass. <laughs> that's uh that's a little unfortunate, buddy. It's, it's not great. But against PK, it's not bad either. It's not. I mean, it, this is like the le Reddit meme of what a bad VW setup looks like. But Shen Shen pass set two seems kind of unbeatable, honestly. Yeah. Like if that's if that's. The chat says, if that's Order Chuche, this is the end of the game. And no Nibiru, so we've made it to end phase successfully. Meaning that PK will have to contend with this in some way, shape, or form. Again, if uh, there is Imperial Order to answer the... Dark oh, Order! ASF, Ooh. pretty good! Very that's a good. pretty Very good one! Good. Ooh, that's good. And while uh, this doesn't seem to do a lot against a monster combo deck, um, most of the ways to deal with Shen Shen are spell cards so you're gonna have to get pretty lucky here <laughs> all right we're and, leading with yeah. that oh wow oh. that's so awesome wow and of course uh shen shen only stops monsters that are sent from the field to the graveyard so the chusinoko sent from the hand to the graveyard is fair game oh man the uh Edo pro <laughs> oh, <God>. coming in clutch <laughs> <laughs> oh word oh my gosh they're not going to cherub yeah. they might be doing this to play around chuche as we saw in the previous game yeah that would do it uh but i have to read cherubini's text exactly if it has to specifically send to grave to protect it you could send one other card you control to the gra oh but it's not a cost yeah yeah and it's not monsters okay. either yeah it's oh it's card. card you're right yeah. wow this card is crazy yep it's any card all right, so, uh, so choosing to go Cherubini rather than like a break sort of out one of the cards, which is fair. It, it kind of depends, right? Like you're in a weird position where depending on the contents of your hand, that anti-spell might like be hurting your opponent more than you. If you have the extenders yeah, yeah. 
if you have the extenders to go into like uh, a really early rusty into break sword and pop the Shen Shen, then you are like right here, for instance, you are very, Ooh. very happy to see uh, your opponent stuck under anti spell. Double Kagamucha! Holy Normal Kagamucha shit, special Kagamucha. I wow, that's uh that's a hand. I am actually shocked they're even on to Kagamucha. Well, let's see. So I think this allows Nathan or not to go into Rusty while keeping Cherry Beanie on the field. So that way Well, that doesn't work. No, no, um, no. Because it only protects itself. I'm trying to think of like what the line is here to play around the Chuchi. <laughs> it looks like they have forgotten to turn it on again. And they go, uh, you know what? It do be not mattering. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, we can go break sword, target the Shen Shen. Yeah. So we can trigger the Seer in a profitable way. Yeah. Well, actually, the Kagamucha Knight is blocking the other zone. So bringing back Graph doesn't actually do anything there. Uh, um, well... It would, right? Because you'd be popping the break sword with break sword. But Cherry Beanie says that Monsters' card points to you. It can't be sure <gasps> by card effects. Including their own! You're right! Oh, but they're gonna drop the Chuche. Uh... Yeah, this is what I was thinking about earlier with the Rusty, right? If you put Rusty in one of the zones, it can't be destroyed by Chuche because of the Cherry Beanie. <laughs> Wait, because... this is a, this and is is a bra realizing, moment. They're realizing now... Oh... Oh no. Super oh well god, played, I'm so sorry. Super oh wow, well Nathan game. absolutely played that perfectly. So now we can we can do what we want. Uh, we can activate Break Sword. Um, you pop Shen Shen for free. Yeah, absolutely wow. for free. That's so strong. And now now the uh, the VW player is locked under anti spell fragrance. If you don't have lethal this turn, which realistically from this position is pretty unlikely, um, if you find a way to out the Chuche. It's going to be hard for them to reestablish a board through maybe like a Requiem. Wow, look at that. That was so, that was so fucking heads up. I can't believe it. Uh, every every single action was used to protect every next step, right? Like the set card to protect the Cherry Beanie, summoning every monster to protect the impending Rusty or Break Sword. And now we're here where yeah. everything has been insulated. Okay, we do have the Ash, Ash and Rusty. Rusty is pretty good. That's pretty good. That's that really is something, huh? Uh, we have had no PK cards. We up until now this point. need like an extender. Like without an extender, this is kind of the end board. You have to go like dragoon pass. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty bad. Definitely not amazing. Um, if you make Verte, you can't necessarily like you can't get the Chuche off the field. Um, you can spend your single negate on the Lulu you know they have in hand, but if they have one other name, you know, it might still be an issue. And we you know that this... Beyond, baby. I was gonna say, we know this VW player <laughs> is on the fucking out to Dragoon. Utopia Beyond is so based. <laughs> it is so absolutely based. Also worth noting, we saw uh, Enter Blathinger, which is another out, because it's a uh, non-targeting banish. Yeah. So we've got a nine and a six out if we so desire. We also have a three out in Gigi or Jaja. Yeah, if they're on Jaja. Man, I think that card is so cool, but nobody plays it. It's so cool for exactly that reason that it outs Dragoon. Yeah. All right. Uh, Dragoon time, I guess. Dragoon time, I guess. Yeah. I, I this, mean, this just strikes me as not super powerful, right? Like, yeah, we've, said, we've said this in the past. We said this in the past where, like, Farf would make fun of Baguska for being Plan B. I think this is the modern Plan B. Yeah, this is the Plan um, B for a new generation. Yeah. Where it's like, it's not, you know, great, but it, it if against, you know, an ill-prepared opponent or somebody who just doesn't have the outs in their hand, mm -hmm. just can win the game by itself sometimes. We'll see if that's the case. Uh, Baguska is the Plan B. No. Dragoon is the Baguska for duelists whose T set pass was firewall pass. <laughs> this is true. 
Baguska is plan F. <laughs> You're looking like Plankton with the Baguska plan Z folder at this point. All right, here we go. So set cards could be Fog Blades, which are not super good against this deck. Um, they're, you know they're going to go for the Lulu first and foremost. Yeah, I mean, what do you think? Do you goon this? Oh, it, it is so difficult. You can't even, like, Cosmic nope, yeah. because you have to wait until your next turn for the ASF. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're letting it happen. Yeah, I think you might just hold the Dragoon for the card that will actually threaten it. Mm -hmm. um, because realistically, uh, VW has... It's like the onus is on VW. Yeah. Because if they, if they don't get rid of everything, then PK can just recur everything back. But again, you have to be cognizant that, like, they can get there with Utopia Beyond without ever running into a Dragoon, potentially. Yeah. Like, if we go for the Lili here, all we have to do is... Do we have a Chuche in Grave? If we do, I mean, this is it. Yeah. I don't know what we targeted. We targeted Chuche, right? We targeted Lulu, we could send Chuche there. Yeah, we don't have a Chuche but... already, but no big deal. We can always just go through a couple more names. Yeah, we got Chinglong as well in Graveyard. God, this is hard. <laughs> this is a really hard match to navigate. Yeah, this is tough. Um... All right, down comes Vermilion. I think we're just trying to clear back row here at this point. This isn't too bad, because we have Shenshin and Grave, which gets to enter Blath here. Right, same deal. Um, so that's like the same thing. And we also have Qinglong, which gets to Lao Lao, which can get to Utopia Beyond. Mm -hmm. So definitely not the worst. This will also possibly force a Fog Blade in the process. Like, if you're forcing Fog Blades, though, that's one <laughs> Dark Ruler. <laughs> oh. It protected Cherubini. It did its job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can see the anti-spell fragrance did end up protecting the Shenshen, but it I mean, did. at what cost, right? Yeah. I mean, Cosmo Jenkins now, is already at a really low life total. Yeah, we're super, super struggling now. Okay. Oh, we had the Chuche in hand. That okay. is real painful, but it ended up fine. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think any part of this game for VW has been exactly you know as prescribed but they're definitely making it work with the best or with what they got you know and i mean for they're chat best. for chat going like dragoon yeah. snore like i i don't know if the dragoon board is strong enough to out like the vw loop like this is a really really good play and depending on what the extra deck looks like they could be in serious trouble here we're two chang to a six that's interesting Interesting. I wonder what other nines there are. Because um, I would expect them to playing... just bring back the Shen Shen if they're doing Enter Blatnir. Yeah, maybe they're just going for a Croc to draw a card first. If they are on it. They can they Croc are. to proc the set card, too, if they want to be super cheeky. Yeah, they will have two cards after this. I don't know how good that is, but... Yeah, I don't know how good it is. I do wonder as well, because GG was the pickup off of the, um, the Qinglong there, so... I do wonder if Lalo is already in hand, because if so, then that's really, really strong. I'm checking the grave real quick. I don't think we have any traps in here. Yeah. For PK, we do not know. There's Inner Blatnir. That's going to eat the uh, the Dragoon 100 times out of 100. Yeah, this will very much force. But I mean, what's your follow-up? Shen Shen? That's nowhere Shen -shen. near good enough. Yeah. Shenshen attacking over Rusty is nice because it does make it so that the traps can't bring him back. So by going into Croc, it made it so that the Shenshen could be used for that purpose, which is a nice pivot. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if there's no Lalo in hand, then the Dragoon is going to stay on the board, and I don't know. I mean, but there if there is a Lalo in hand, like that's disastrous, right? That's incredibly strong, yeah. <laughs> like if there's a Lalo in hand, I feel like that's just straight up the end of the game unless the set card is yeah. like exactly fog blade. blade. Like it has yeah. to be pretty exact. There it is, oh, baby. It is. There it yeah. is every time. Yeah, Holy we figured. Shit. I mean, GG GG was searched, so yeah, I mean, wow. Had to have been, right? This is super super well played. Cosmo is playing um, out of his fucking mind. Yeah. Both players, both playing players are playing extremely well. Crazy yeah. good. All right, so now we get back Lalo. Hey, two sixes. What do you think we can make with that chat? Yeah. 
And you know, even if it is fall blade set, we still have Chu Chain, right? Yeah. So we just Chu Chain pop the fall blade, and we're good to go. Oh my gosh! All right, it's got to be fog blade. Wow, the entire not... board Whoa. just like that got outed. Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! We clean house with this board. Oh, but god, oh we're two hundred shy of lethal. We're oh, so fucking so close. close. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Spectacular, we do something spectacular game too. three. Yeah, great game three, great finals. This is this is fantastic. Utopia Beyond, greatest card of Yu-Gi-Oh, no question. <laughs> Utopia Beyond, baby. So like here's I the deal. You you still can't really count uh Phantom Knight out. They're gonna have material on field. They got crap in graveyard. It, uh, almost everything comes down to what that set card is, I feel like. And unfortunately, as of now, what it's looking to be is like an unactivatable spell. I honestly don't think it matters. Like, PK Scrape, if you look at it, doesn't contain that much. Like, you have no PKs except, like, Break Sword. This Rusty is getting banished. And then you have to deal with Chuche, Shen Shen, Zeus. That's pretty and insane. And spell. Yeah, you're right. Like, I'm talking up uh, the ability for PK to come back, but Jesus, it's going to be a hard road to toe. And a playing Geyser Charger. Let's Hell go. Yes! Geyser Charger for the format. Hell format yes, Let's baby! Go. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Holy shit. I oh love my it. god. Guy Charger is so funny. <laughs> All right, Chuche at end step to pop the fucking uh Verte says, You're not even getting material. We're not no fucking material. around here. Yep. Get everything off the board. I oh. cannot believe that. What an expertly wow. expertly done turn. Well played by both players. Like PK navigated last turn so well to play around everything uh despite the anti-spell for the hard drawn dark ruler i mean they had it right and yeah vw just came back like i mean if this is this is if anything Boom, proof that Dragoon and that's it. it and that's it vw <laughs> wow. wins finals two to one that was such a good game wow Oh my god, Cosmo Jenkins played out of his fucking mind. And for what it's worth, Nathan or not played pretty damn good as well. That was that was unbelievable. Just just how back and forth that finals was. Wow, wow, wow. Whoo. That that was incredible. Like that, that was a great display of technical play of what the deck's uh, strengths and weaknesses are. We got to see, you know, the shortcomings, we got to see the pop-offs. You know, everything happened in that match. You know, really couldn't ask for a much better finals. Yeah. Wow. And uh, chat, absolutely correct. Legit sad to see both of them lose. They they absolutely kicked ass. Whew. What a, uh, what a match to end <laughs> before Leov format, huh?